the Ryan and Ryan Power Hour podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Welcome back to Ryan and Ryan here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stepperich. And I'm Ryan Risky. All right, let's uh, get through the American League Central here, um, starting with the Chicago White Sox. Uh, the rotation, as you're probably familiar with, is Chris Sale, Jeff Samarja, Jose Quintana, John wait, Diggs, wait, 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 and Hector Noesi. Before, before you even say those last two names, <laughs> man, when you hear those three names, you think, man, this team's got to have a good rotation. And then you hear the last two names. Yeah, and then it, it all just sort of. Pew, yeah, pew. I remember when we had Joe Zawelski on. Wait, no, Joe Ostrowski. Joe Ostrowski. Ostrowski. Let's not get confused Jeez. with those two names. No. Yeah, I remember that. There, it was just kind of like. I remember when we talked about Hector Noesi. He's like, yeah, I don't think there's any White Sox fans that think that guy's good. Yeah, the only person that thinks he's good is Rick Hahn. Yeah, yeah I mean, Rick Hahn thinks uh, he can get a. Nice shot there. No, well, Rick Hahn thinks all of his players are good. He has a big ego. And uh, now, is it expected that the uh, Sox are going to go with a four-man rotation for the first week until Sal comes back, or are they going to have a guy like Brad Penny fill in? No, they I, they must be going four-man because they sent Penny down to AAA, and okay. Rodon went down to AAA, so they must be going with a four-man rotation. All right, so they're going with the four-man rotation. Funny um, thing is, if yeah. Sale is healthy, they could go the four-man rotation and think that you're going to have a three-win, three-out-of-four wins. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Although maybe that'd be two-out-of-four, because whenever Quintana pitches, they just don't win. The bullpen looks like this. David Robertson is the new closer. Jake Patrichka is there. I believe he's starting the season on the DL with a shoulder injury. Yes, it says to start season on DL, right forearm soreness. So uh, hopefully he won't miss too much time, um, but he'll be there. Zach Duke. Uh, who got a ridiculous contract from them. They have Javi Guerra, who's been there for a year or two. Zach Putnam is there as well. I remember he was awful with the Cubs, and he wasn't much. He wasn't that great with the White Sox. He had, was okay, except this spring he finally exploded. Uh, Michael Clayto. Michael Clayto. Who uh, did not too good last no, year. No, although none of them He did. throws 100 miles an hour, except he has little to no control, so he's always walking, guys. As we talked about earlier, they acquired Dan Jennings. Yeah, I mean, I there's no way that the Marlins would trade him when he had a 135 ERA last year. They have Eric for, Surkamp yeah, the, and Kyle Drabeck. Yeah, they got Drabeck off of waiver. Both of them were off of waivers from the Blue Jays just in consecutive years. And with Jennings, I mean, he he has to be a Randy Choate like guy. He can only get lefties <laughs> out. Can't get righties out. He's a one and done guy. You bring him in to face a lefty, and then you bring him out immediately. Yeah, and Robin Ventura loves to do that. He loves to blow through his bullpen. Well, in his defense. He was probably sure. I mean, he doesn't have much to, to work yeah, with. But. In his defense, he had no bullpen last year. He was just bringing guy. He was literally bringing guys in, hoping that they wouldn't be as bad as the guy before them. Although I always thought it was funny when, like, um, you know, a bullpen pitcher, like, he would get like an out or two straight outs, and then all of a sudden, oh, there comes Robin Ventura. He can't face the fir- the third guy, and then the next guy who comes in gives up like a home run or a double or something. I know. thought it was always hilarious when Be- I always would watch when I'd check their box score to see when they'd bring in Belisario, and then I'd always <laughs> turn the game on because I knew he'd blow it every time. Right. I remember it, it was just funny watching uh, Belisario pitch. I wish the Sox would have kept him because <laughs> I remember there was a I remember my friend texted me um i'm watching i'm watching the Sox game they're up by two in the ninth inning and belisario's in Uh-oh. and I, I was like dude don't watch it and he's like and then uh later he calls me he's like belisario just gave up a walk-off three-run homer <laughs> and he's like i i was like i told you don't watch it he's gonna blow it. he's like yeah i knew better than to watch it and i still watched it yeah exactly <laughs> that was that was it was always funny when Belisario pitched because you always knew he'd blow it. I, I was at three games last year that he came in and blew. Of course. I, I yeah. mean, what would a Sox game be last year without that? Yeah, it was actually just funny because they're, they're up three. Jenks pitched eight shutout innings. They're up three nothing in the ninth. 
Then he gets the first two guys out against the Yankees, and then then he came in. Then he uh, just gave up three runs, and it went to extras. And then Putnam gave up a home run to Jacoby Ellsbury, and they lost. Oh, okay, which, I remember that game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, my friend was so pissed off. We only went because it was Chris Sale bobblehead day. My friend was so pissed off when Belisario gave up that final run. He he got booed so badly, <laughs> and. And then another game I went to for Frank Thomas Hall of Fame replica plaque. The Sox scored four runs in the bottom of the seventh inning to take a 6-4 lead, and then the next inning Belisario came in and gave up three runs and didn't even get an out. Of course. I don't remember that, but oh, man. Yeah, that was like that was a Saturday in August. All right. And then there was another game in uh, September I went to. The Sox were up like... Three to two, and he came in and gave up three runs, and then they were down uh, like five to five to three, uh-huh. and then uh, someone else came in and gave up another run, and then Abreu hit a home run in the ninth inning to make it six to four, and then they and then that was the final score. My friends are all so pissed off watching Belisario come in. I I just remember he in one of the and we were at Paul Canerco retirement not retirement day that. Paul Canerco Day, which was the second to last game of the season. And what I remember is Belisario got up. He got up from the bullpen after his first warm up pitch. Fans started booing. Of course they did. They started booing right just when he was warming up. He was getting booed. It was real. And what was the funny part was that was after a loud ovation to Paul Canerco after uh, he uh, left the departed from the game. All right, the catcher for the White Sox, of course, is Tyler Flowers with it's, Giovanni Soto backing him up. It's Rick Hahn's guy. Rick Hahn likes Tyler Flowers. Yep. Third base, Connor Gillespie. Um, yeah, I don't think he'll be playing against left-handed pitching. They'll probably have, like, Bonifacio or Beckham playing um, against lefties. Yeah, I think last year Gil- Gillespie hit two fifteen against lefties. Uh, shortstop still Alexi Ramirez. Yeah. Second base will probably be Micah Johnson. I read Micah Johnson and Carlos Sanchez were both told that they're making the team. Yeah, so uh, we'll have to see which one yeah, ends up so. starting. It'll probably be Johnson. I mean, the thing is, Johnson's the better prospect, probably has more upside. Sanchez does have the big league experience and did pretty well with the two fifty average last year. Jose Abreu, the first baseman, and Adam LaRoche, Adam LaRoche is the DH. The DH uh, a pretty darn good DH to have. You'd think that it should be the other way around since LaRoche is a good defender and Abreu is invisible on defense. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, but uh, as of right now, anyway, that's not the way it is. Melky Cabrera in left, Adam Eaton in center, and Avisael Garcia in right. I mean, it is. It's it's not a bad team. I just don't think that they're going to be that, like, super great of a team. I mean, I think they could win. They could have a f- over 500 record. I don't think they'll win, make the playoffs. And uh, another uh, funny thing with the White Sox is... I was watching a game with my two friends, and Abreu hit a two-run homer off of Kershaw. And my friends are, like, going crazy. They th- thinking Abreu's oh, all, I all that. great. That was in L.A., right? Yeah, that was in L.A. And then the best part was, like, two innings later, Abreu made two errors in the inning by, like, missing a grounder, dropping a ball, and then there were two singles that literally were a step to his right. He just turned around and looked at the ball, and then my friends got so pissed off they turned off the game. So I mean, I I told them his defense is so bad that that if that was Rizzo, those wouldn't that wouldn't they wouldn't have scored those five unearned runs, and then the Sox lost five to two because of that. <laughs> so he he brings a good bat. He just brings a terrible glove. I, I thought it was hilarious that he hits a two run homer and then he makes two errors and then just doesn't even go for two grounders that literally were less than a step to his right that it costed the Sox four runs and or five runs and they lost five to two. Right. Uh all right. Uh moving on to the Detroit Tigers, the team that people are still picking to win these Yeah, uh, they had an interesting offseason. They let Max Scherzer walk in free agency. They trade for uh Alfredo Simone and Shane Green, then they go and trade Rick Porcello for Joanna Cespedes. They re-signed Victor Martinez, and last year their offense was really good. And if you think about it, this year it got better with the trade for Cespedes, and they actually have legit outfielders now And Cespedes. And if J.D. Martinez can replicate somewhat what he was doing last year, and then they still got Rajay Davis as a backup, I believe, unless he's the starter in center field. Uh, no, uh, the starter in center field is Ghosts. Oh, that's right, Anthony, Anthony Ghost. They got him Anthony from Ghost. the Blue Jays. 
All right, so the rotation, as we're pretty familiar with, David Price, Justin Verlander is starting the season on and the DL. the DL, yeah. They don't have much pitching depth. Uh, they have Sanchez. They have... Shane Green. They have uh, Alfredo Simone, which is a really good pickup. Um, yeah, the underrated pickup. They didn't really have to give up much to get him, considering he's like 33 and on an expiring contract. And uh, Shane Green. Which so I, that, I like Shane Green a so lot. Sort fills out a, their rotation. I like Shane Green. He had a really good season for the Yankees. I think they got a really... Good pitcher there. They just don't have much depth because, I mean, Verlander's starting the season on the DL, and then, of course, he's just not that good anymore. Right. Bullpen. Uh, Joe Nathan, the closer, they have remember, they always yeah. Soria. They always have a bad bullpen. Yes, they do. Like, remember, they'll trade for bullpen guys who are really, really good, and then they'll go and trade for them or sign them, and then they just blow up. I didn't realize this. They have Tom Gorzolani. Oh, they must have signed him in the offseason. He's a good left-handed specialist coming out of the bullpen. Uh, Jabba Chamberlain, Al Albuquerque. Not Albuquerque, New Mexico, but Al Albuquerque. I believe they have one of their top prospects in Bruce Rondon. He had Tommy John surgery yes. last year, so yes, he's he'll learned. be in the bullpen at some point this season. The catcher, Alex Avila. You'd think that they'd try to upgrade at catcher since Avila just can't hit. He did good, what, his first year? His first year, he hit like 280 with 19 yeah, home runs. I, I, I had him on my fantasy team, I, like in 2012. I, yeah, I had him on my fantasy team that year. Two, and then I picked him up. I drafted him again the next year, and he forgot how to hit. <laughs> you know, I think I had the same issue. I think I did have yeah, him. And then I ended up picking up Willine Rosario. Uh, Nick Castellanos is the third baseman. Yep. He's pretty good. He's a pretty good player. He's still developing some more power. He's got the ability to hit 20 home runs. Again, he might not do it this year. He's still developing that power. And then at shortstop, they have Jose Iglesias, who yes. missed... The entire season last year with stress fractures in both ankles. And, of course, Austin Romine can back up pretty much any position in the infield, according mm-hmm. to this. So. Uh, second base, Ian Kinsler, of course. And first base, Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera. And D.H. Victor Martinez. D.H. is Victor Martinez. Left field, Cespedes. Center field, Ghost. Roger Davis uh, can back him up. And they have J.D. Martinez in right field, who had a very good year last year. Yeah, I don't think he'll replicate those numbers that he performed. Uh, put up last year. I still think he could have maybe a solid 280 average with like 15 to 17 home runs. I don't think he's a 20 home run guy. I mean, he's a pretty solid player for his salary. Yeah. All right, let's move over to the Kansas City Royals, the AL champs, as uh, their rotation is still a pretty good rotation. Uh, Jordano Ventura, who who's I, the opening day starter, who which, I have on my fantasy team as well. Yeah, we'll see if he can get the strikeout pitch working because if he can. Strike some more guys out. He's going to be deadly. Yes. Danny Duffy, Edison Volquez, Jason Vargas, and uh, Jeremy Guthrie. And don't forget they have Chris Medlin coming back from Tommy John surgery, who they gave a two-year contract to. Yes, they have Medlin. And then they also have another guy, Chris Young, uh, is also. Oh, yeah, he was the AL comeback player of the year last year. had a, like a 350 ERA for the Mariners last year. The bullpen is quite possibly the best in all of baseball. Well, the- Kelvin Herrera, Wade Davis, Greg Holland. Now they want the bullpen. Jason Frazier. Yeah. Jason Frazier, who my dad works with his brother. That's very cool. I I think I I remember you telling me that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and and I mean the bullpen. I mean it won't be bullpens just aren't like as good year in and year out. It'll still be probably really good. I don't think it'll be as good. I don't think Wade Davis is going to be as good this year. I mean, probably not. Yeah, and also throwing the fact that think about how many innings these guys pitch. I mean, those guys probably pitched over a hundred innings if you include the playoffs, because all three of those guys it seemed like were pitching in every game in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, catcher Salvador Perez, of course, one of the better de- best defensive catchers in the game, still has some work to do with the contact with the bat. He still ha- he has the power to hit, maybe potentially hit up to twenty home runs. I think he hit seventeen last year, although he did play in a hundred and. 54 games, so they they need to give him some time off because I mean you can't have your you're going to blow out your catcher's uh, knees and his ankles and his lower body by doing that, and then he can't catch anymore. Right, uh, DH Kendris Morales, which is a solid pickup. They needed to get a little more thunder into the lineup with a little bit of power. That's why they signed him and Alex Rios. Uh, first base Eric Hosmer. He needs to start hitting for more power. His rookie year, he hit 19 home runs, and then since, I don't even think he's hit 10. Right. Omar Infante is still the second baseman. On that three-year deal. 
Uh, Alcides Escobar, the shortstop. He's uh, he's developed into a really nice piece. Now, he's piece. an option because uh, J.J. Hardy is starting the season for my fantasy team on the DL. So I'm wondering if I should pick up Alcides Escobar because I know there's a couple shortstop options. I, I think he might be my front runner. It, it depends what you want. If you want a little more power. 